Pavlovian conditioning is an important, but often undiscussed, aspect of game design. Even the man, the myth, the legend, the winner of the Cobbler Quarterly Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive Award, Todd Howard talks about this. Albeit in a sort of roundabout way. You can design for this moment, even simple things, puzzle games. My favorite sort of ego-stroking design to make you feel great moment in any game is Peggle. Pretty great, I think I'll play another level. It isn't just the over-the-top animations and music that makes you feel great. It's the conditioning of those sounds accompanying your success. Games should always strive to make the player feel that they're being properly rewarded for their time and effort, and this is a great way in which to do that. We're all gamers here, so let's have a little gamer chat. Except for my parents who watch my videos. This is secret gamer knowledge I'm about to share. This pit is for hollows, not for the likes of you sane folk. Us pro gamers don't often talk about this, due to our fear of being descended on by a horde of Karens wielding flaming swords of fear-mongering Facebook posts. But games are addictive. Leveling up, unlocking new equipment, the Pavlovian conditioning of getting a new high score and having goddamn fireworks go off. Action. Reward. Stimulation. Action. Reward. Stimulation. Just about every game has this somewhere. I'm not one to chase a level up or in-game currency usually, but that physical hit, you know? That's the good shit. That visceral crunch. Slam. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, I love it. That sound that plays when you do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. It's shallow, yeah, but it strokes that little rodent brain that lies underneath my big cumbersome human brain. This isn't inherently a bad thing. Games demand much more of a time commitment than other forms of entertainment. And the short-term rewards and long-term rewards both hold your attention. It's harmless in the end. No one ever ruined their lives in order to grind smithing in Skyrim. Deja vu. Unlock the handgun takedown in Far Cry 3. It's like I'm walking on sunshine. Or glory kill a fucking imp. The problem comes when game publishers use Pavlovian conditioning and addictive design to fleece money from you. How much is enough? How big does this pile have to be? I used to really like Overwatch. I stopped playing it, but not because they nerfed my favorite hero, or the toxic community, or whatever clickbaity shit people say is killing Overwatch nowadays. I stopped playing because I didn't feel rewarded for my time. Getting a loot box filled with trash is not a reward for leveling up. I'm the trash man! I throw trash all over the, all over the ring! It's not fun, it's not something you chase. The action is there, and the stimulation is there. But there is no reward. There could be, but there almost never is. I got a tiny amount of in-game currency, a blue skin for a character I don't play, a voice line for a character I don't play, and a spray for a character I don't play. This is like if you were given a random perk in alchemy for leveling up your melee character in Skyrim. Taking away a player's ability to control how they're rewarded results in them not actually being rewarded. By the way, I've played a hell of a lot more than this level shows. I got to like level 100 something on Xbox. Because I loved the gameplay, but that progression, that feeling of getting what you've been working towards, was sabotaged by Blizzard. You see, the box shakes before exploding upwards. It subconsciously communicates to you that this is a box filled with an object of great power. And your previous conditioning from games of action, reward, and stimulation makes you feel that something is missing when there is no reward. So, you chase the dragon. You buy 10, 20, or 30 of them in search of a reward. A reward that you should have already received through normal gameplay. Your chance of getting something actually decent is low, because if you got what you wanted, you would stop buying them. Unlocking something you've been working towards is fun. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Buying the ability to have a random chance to get what you want is not. I often hear people say that it's fine to have microtransactions if it's just for cosmetics, and I try to respect people's opinions, but you can go fuck yourselves with a fire poker covered in hot sauce. Don't give them this. 
Don't tell developers that it's okay to intentionally ruin their game's reward system. That's like telling your kid it's okay to draw on the wall because you think it'll keep them from burning your fucking house down. You motherfuckers need to read up on your damn history. Or at least read if you give a mouse a cookie. Appeasement does not work. If you give Blizzard the Sudetenland of monetizing cosmetics, then before long, they'll annex the Poland of making you pay $40 to unlock the ability to level up. Doom Eternal has you unlock cosmetics by just playing the fucking game. And guess what? Being rewarded with silly little cosmetics for playing the game is a fun thing. You know, fun, that thing that games were before they turned into software programs designed to steal money from children. When I got a loot box in Overwatch and opened it only for it to have four dick piercings for Winston or whatever the fuck, I didn't feel rewarded. I felt resentment towards the game for not valuing my time spent playing it. And the irritation that Blizzard thinks I'm a fucking child that can be so easily manipulated. It feels like somebody WANTS TO SELL ME SOMETHING! <laughs> I told you he was on to us! Exploiting addictive mechanics to beg for money from you destroys games. Poor people give me money! It's not just greedy, it's bad game design. I'd probably still be playing Overwatch, and Destiny 2, and Shadow of War, and Fallout 76 if the games actually properly rewarded me for continuing to play them. Many games have used the addictive nature of the medium in order to get more money from you or destroy themselves in the process. But Ruiner? Ruiner uses its addictive mechanics the way God intended, to keep you playing the game. Is this game viscerally satisfying on a moment-to-moment -moment basis? Holy shit, yes. Every weapon has a punch and weight to it. Shotguns sound like my dad sneezing into a megaphone. You can do executions on enemies that result in their entire body exploding. This action is also punctuated by music that I... I honestly don't know what genre it is. It sounds like what Satan would play at an orgy, and it's easily one of my favorite game soundtracks ever. And the driving synth and bass perfectly punctuate the carnage. And the voice lines that play when you get a combo... Those combo voice lines appeal to my gamer brain even more than a body pillow covered in Mountain Dew. This game isn't just viscerally satisfying though, it's got long-term things to keep you hooked as well. After big fights, a weapon grinder will show up and turn all the discarded weapons into experience points, and the animations and sounds are scientifically engineered to get you hyped. I need the heroin! You'll get it, Mick! I need the heroin, all Joe! Alright, alright. Joe, I need the heroin! Okay, Mick! Give me the heroin, Joe! There are also chests filled with experience points, and you know how in most games you walk up and you press fucking E and it just opens? Yeah, no, in Ruiner, you kick that shit open. Turn down for what? You curb stomp that goddamn chest and you slurp up those experience points. You spend all this experience on skills, and there's a lot of them to work towards. Now in most games, having a lot of skills to unlock doesn't mean much, because most games are easier than a porn star that ordered pizza she can't afford. There are literally hundreds of wives and girls who just want sex. Just visit fuckinyourcity.com. But Ruiner is, um... It's hard. It'll ruin your asshole, to be perfectly honest, causing you to desperately grab every edge you can get. And when the game does kill you, which it will often do, a voice will say shit like, Get up and try again. Now, normally, hearing a line like this after every death would just piss me off and cause me to throw my computer out the window so I can teach the game a fucking lesson. Get up and try again. But I don't. Why? Because this game is weapons grade addictive. No, I'm not being dramatic, we need to tactically carpet bomb Ruiner Steam Codes onto ISIS so they'll be too busy chasing experience points to actually blow shit up. Not to mention, because it is difficult, that feeling of beating a boss is fantastic. Getting your ass kicked over and over and over until you learn a boss's moveset and enter a sort of zen mode, where you become so good that now you're the fucking boss. It's a feeling you can't buy. Which I know for a fact, because I checked the Atomic Shop in Fallout 76 and couldn't find a feeling of accomplishment listed for 800 atoms. Ruiner is a game that, above all else, keeps you hooked. And this is where the story comes in. At first glance, Ruiner's story seems quite a bit like Super Hots. So, you know, the writers just wrote the word meta on a post-it note and took the rest of the day off. You're a faceless murder man who does exactly what an omnipresent voice tells him to do because this is a video game. And what he tells you to do is murder. I hate when games do this because it's not clever. 
It'd be like turning on a movie, but instead of the director trying to tell an actual story, he just rubs his nipples on camera while saying, Oh, I'm so smart. You can only watch what I film because really I'm in control. It is just so fucking self-indulgent, I despise it. But I still like Super Hot because its gameplay is fun and it's got a great sense of style. And Ruiner sure as shit has both of those qualities in spades. Which is why I kept playing despite the story irritating me at first. But what first clued me in that Ruiner had more to say than just, this is a video game, was the tone of the voice influencing you. At times it's endearing, referring to you as puppy. Find him puppy. Which I like, uh, probably too much. Come on puppy. This better not awaken anything in me. But at other times it's demanding, not even demanding, controlling. Get up and try again. And as I said before, I get up and try again and again and again. Th this game is just so satisfying to play. I will suck dick on the street for experience points. This game also has dialogue options, which I usually find tedious because they're almost always meaningless, but in Ruiner, they're so meaningless that I got confused. With the exception of a few yes-no choices that still don't change anything, each choice is like this. Two options, both of them purposefully designed to be meaningless. The last choice you make in the game, oh yeah, spoilers, I guess, it's not really, I mean, skip 10 seconds forward and you'll be good, is literally nod slash shrug. That's the final choice in the game. Could you imagine if the end of Mass Effect 3 was scratch your ass or think about Liara's tits? Most games pretend to give you options when you really don't have any, but Ruiner is mocking me for not having any options. Then I started to notice something else about the story. Everyone is being controlled. You, the villain, this guy, that guy, this chick's controlling this chick, and this chick's controlling that chick. You spend one level torturing a guy into opening areas for you while you're being controlled by the puppy chick. Then the guy you've been controlling is controlled by the chicks that are controlling each other and you're controlled by the puppy chick into fighting him. It's like cyberpunk Pokemon for monsters. It's just assholes controlling assholes the whole way down. Literally the only person in this game that isn't being controlled is the puppy chick. Everyone's being controlled and groomed and pushed into... Fuck. I'm being controlled. I didn't really want to keep going through those tough fights, I had to keep going. Those tough bosses were standing between me and my sweet sweet heroine, so I threw myself at them over and over until they died from the blunt force trauma of me cracking my skull against them. The game didn't do that super hot thing where it tried to be meta and broke the fourth wall and tell me I was being controlled. The game just made me feel controlled. I wasn't playing the game. The game was playing me. Well, well, well. How the turntables... A plus, Ruiner. Gold star. I was being controlled by addiction. That's the power that games have. The ability to condition you with sights and sounds. I'm glad Ruiner used it to make a statement, and perhaps more importantly, to get me to have fun. When I wasn't getting the shit kicked out of me by those bosses, I was having a good time. I was just so caught up in chasing my next hit that I didn't realize what had happened. Ruiner isn't addictive to the point of it being dangerous, no one's gonna ruin their lives to be called puppy, but it's addictive enough to keep you playing, and addictive enough to say something. Where other games use addictive mechanics to get you to buy shit, Ruiner uses it to reinforce the themes of the story, the danger of surrendering control. The lesson of the story is one I think every gamer should heed. I've never bought a loot box, nor have I spent money on any skins or dances or even the oh-so-tempting contemporary wood floors. Because I don't want to encourage bad game design. Because I'm better than that. And so are you. And because when you let yourself be controlled by addiction, you lose the ability to choose. Get up, puppy.